All right, guys, let's start chapter three, um, which is one of my favorite chapters in the whole, the whole year. Um, this chapter is about redox reactions. And redox reactions are, are seen everywhere in the world. And so I've put together a few pictures that uh, remind me of, of these redox reactions. Remember last year in chemistry, in first year chemistry, we talked about a number of different kinds of chemical reactions. We talked about synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement. We talked about combustion. But we never talked about redox reactions. Um, and so I'm, and this chapter is all about those reactions. So what reminds me of redox reactions are these pictures. Uh, this is a leaf. Leaves are where photosynthesis takes place. Um, and photosynthesis is redox reactions. A lot of different uh, redox reactions taking place in photosynthesis. A battery. We made a battery last class period, but uh, batteries run off of redox reactions. And there's a, a picture of a pizza here. All food that we eat gets digested and then the nutrients from those, the food that we eat gets taken into our, our blood and then into all of our cells. And inside our cells, um, a bunch of chemical reactions are taking place to harness the energy from, from that food. But uh, again, what kind of chemical reactions are they? They're redox reactions taking place. So how we get our food is cellular respiration. So inside our cells, cellular respiration is occurring and they're occurring because of redox reactions. Um, combustion is also a redox reaction. So anytime something's burning. And then we'll finish up the chapter by talking about corrosion and how metals can corrode. But again, it's just a type of redox reaction. So we see these reactions everywhere. This, I just want to kind of introduce what they are and um, start thinking about redox reactions. So, if you've got your chapter three guided notes out, <clears throat> please have them out and fill them in as we go through the upcoming slides. Okay, so this chapter is about electrochemistry. Electrochemistry is the study of how chemical energy is converted to electrical energy and vice versa. So we're taking some chemicals which have chemical energy and we're going to convert that chemical energy into electrical energy. Well, electrical energy is the flow of electrons or electricity. So we're taking chemicals and converting it into electricity. And then we're going to do it in reverse, where we're going to take electricity and convert it into chemical energy. So this study of how this happens is called electrochemistry. Alessandro Volta he was an Italian chemist who invented the first battery in the year 1800. So it's been a little over 200 years since Alessandro Volta invented or created the first battery. And think about how battery technology has gotten so much better since then, and it's really changed the world. All the devices that we use pretty much need a battery, and so it was a <clears throat> really cool invention. Well, the term volt, the term volt comes from Alessandro Volta's last name. It's abbreviated with a capital V, and it's a measure of electric potential energy and was named in honor of Alessandro Volta. So when we have a battery, like a double-A battery, a double-A battery okay, um, has the electric potential energy of 1.5 volts. And so that V stands for Volta, or from Alessandro Volta's name. Okay, um, here is a picture of the world's first battery. Again, Alessandro Volta came up with it in the year 1800. It was called the voltaic pile, and all it was was just like we did in class. We put a penny, so copper, and uh, stacked it with zinc, washers. But there's got to be a little uh, space in between that's, that's filled with an electrolyte solution so that the electrons can get from one metal to the other metal. And then you just stack them in series and you add up all the voltages from each cell. And so that's basically what a battery is. Of course you know this, we did it in class last time. And so, or you will do it in class if you're watching the video. K, 
Okay, electrochemical cells is a device capable of generating electrical energy from chemical reactions and vice versa. So electrochemical cells device capable of generating electrical energy from chemical reactions and vice versa. It goes both ways. There's two different types of electrochemical cells. And we're going to go through both of them, and we're going to make both of them in class, in the lab, in the lab here. So let's go through them. There's two types. One is called a galvanic cell, um, but a lot of chemistry textbooks will say a voltaic. Um, actually, these words are interchangeable. They mean the same thing. And I will usually use this term, a voltaic cell, and I'll tell you why later. But they mean the same thing. Okay, so a galvanic or a voltaic cell turns chemical energy into electrical energy. So you take some chemicals, a pile of chemicals here, and we convert it into electrical energy or electricity. And this produces energy, electrical energy, which we can measure in terms of volts. And so why I always remember voltaic is because if it produces volts, so if we're producing electrical energy, I think it's easier to remember voltaic um, because it produces volts. But um, galvanic works as well. They're, they mean the same thing. Okay, the second type of electrochemical cell is called an electrolytic cell. Electrolytic cells turn electrical energy into chemical energy. And so you'll notice it's just the opposite of a voltaic cell. But with an electrolytic cell, you need energy. You need electrical energy input. So you need uh, some voltage to be input in order to do that. Okay. So again, we're going to make both of these in the lab. We'll go through each one of them um, in great detail coming up in the course. But a voltaic takes chemical energy and produces electrical energy. And an electrolytic, it's just the opposite. We take electrical energy and convert it back to chemical energy. So how batteries work? A battery is made up of several electrochemical cells connected in series to turn chemical energy into electrical energy. So these electrochemical cells that we're talking about in the previous slide, we can connect them together in series and create electrical energy. And that's what a battery does. A battery is made from two different types of metals. You just need two different metals which are called electrodes. So those two metals that we have are called electrodes. And you also need a way for the electrons to go from one metal to another, so you need an electrolyte solution. Oftentimes this is uh, an acid, um, salt water, or something like that. that. Something that can conduct a charge, that carries a charge through it. Pure water would not be uh, an electrolyte solution, it wouldn't work. Okay, so let me just re-emphasize that a battery is made of two metals and an electrolyte solution. One electrode, so one metal, loses electrons, while the other metal, which is called an electrode, gains electrons. So one's losing the electrons, one is taking the electrons. And so there's a flow of electrons, which produces electricity. <clears throat> Okay, we, we uh, did the penny battery lab already. If you're watching the video, if you haven't done it, um, we can do it. Uh, so you make a, a small battery out of pennies, and it lights an LED or a, or a buzzer. Okay, we're going to make an electrochemical cell as well. It will light up a small LED or make a small buzzer sound as well. We're going to do that in class. Okay, uh, this is a picture of an electrochemical cell, and we're going to diagram it here in just a moment. But before we diagram it, let me explain it. Let's kind of take a tour uh, through this electrochemical cell. I'd like to start right here with this piece of metal. It's, it's a zinc strip, so it's just a piece of zinc metal. Okay, and then it's connected with this wire to a copper strip. So another piece of metal, copper. So an electrochemical cell can be used to make a battery, and so we know a battery has two types of metals. This one's made of zinc and copper. Okay, And if you'll notice, the electrons are flowing through this wire 
going to the right and coming down into the copper. So what that tells us is that copper attracts electrons stronger than the zinc does. And so there's a flow of electrons and they're measuring that flow of electrons or electricity with this device called the voltmeter. And this is producing 1.1 volts of electricity. Okay. Well, let's go into it a little bit deeper. How does this work? Okay, and if we look, they're both electrodes are put into a beaker here of solution. This solution is an electrolyte solution. And if you look on this left side here, uh, the zinc strip is put into uh, an electrolyte solution. And <clears throat> this diagram right here is kind of uh, zoomed in on this, on this strip here. And what you'll notice is that the zinc is losing electrons. And when it loses two electrons, the zinc falls off of this zinc strip into the solution and becomes zinc 2 plus. That should be a plus right there. Okay, and then the electrons are taken across through this wire because the, the copper is attracting it more. And when those two electrons come into this um, cathode here, or this zinc, this copper strip, that Cu2 plus right here, once it has the two electrons that come onto it, the copper actually gets formed into pure copper. So it's not copper plus two, it's just Cu now. And so what you'll notice is that this copper strip over here is going to get bigger. You're adding copper from solution and it's, it's being deposited onto the copper strip. And so that one gets big. The zinc on the other hand, you're losing the zinc and it's falling off. And so it's going to get really small. It actually gets corroded and it almost dissolves completely. Okay. Well, there's a couple more parts to this electrochemical cell that I'd like to talk about. One important part is called the salt bridge. The salt bridge allows ions to flow. Ions to flow. Between the different halves of your electrochemical cell. And notice here that there's a this ion here is positively charged, and if you remember from last year, a positively charged ion is called the cation. And the cations will always flow toward the cathode. And so whatever side the cations flow to, that's called the cathode. In this case, the copper is called the cathode. So that's where cathode comes from. It comes from cation because the cations flow toward it. Well, let's look at the other half. This is an ion. It's negatively charged, and if you remember from last year, this is called an anion. Anions always flow toward the anode. Again, that's where the word comes from, an anion. Flow toward it. Okay. And so, this just allows the balance of charge. Remember, we had two electrons coming toward the copper side. That would build up a negative charge. But to keep the charges balanced, you need a, zinc, a salt bridge, and so this Sodium cation, which is positively charged, comes in here, two of them, for every two electrons, and that keeps the charges balanced. And over here, we're producing zinc 2 plus, so in order to keep the charges balanced, you have two chlorine uh, ion anions coming in, again, to keep them balanced. So, when would this electrochemical cell stop producing some voltage? Either you take this salt bridge and you lift it out, of the beakers here, the flow of electrons would stop because you have no way to balance the charges and that would stop and kill the battery. Or you could take out the electrodes. The electrodes, if you take them out, there's no way for the electrons to flow. Or your electrolytic solution here, this beakers, what they're full of, dries up, then your battery would also die. Okay, so here's the overall reaction of what's happening here. We've got zinc metal plus copper ions going to zinc ions plus copper metal. And all we're doing is harnessing these electrons, these flowing electrons, and we're measuring that energy in terms of volts. And we can use this electricity to do a lot of different things to do work for us. So that's an electrochemical cell. Again, we're going to diagram that, and we're going to study it in great detail in this chapter. So hopefully that helped. Let's go to the diagram of the electrochemical cell that you've got in your guided notes. Um, let's just start with the easy part here that we just talked about. Um, let's just start at F here. What is this called, this 
this thing that's connecting our two metal strips. That's called a, a, a wire. Okay. The electrons travel through it. Um, e, this bridge here, was called the salt bridge. Okay. Again, your cations flow one way and your anions flow the other way across the salt bridge to keep the charges balanced. Okay, A was your um, zinc metal, but it doesn't have to be zinc. It could, do, it could be a different type of metal as well. So this is called an electrode, just a piece of metal that's one side of your battery. Um, and then B would be the copper metal. Um, and this one was called an electrode as well. So anytime you have a, a metal in your battery, they're called the electrodes. Okay. Um, well, C and D are both pointing to the same strip here. C, what, what electrode was this? Was, this was the anode. Um, and D was called the cathode. Um, and then G and H was pointing to the solution in the beakers. So this is called an electrolyte solution. Electrolyte solution, and so is H. Okay. And the flow of electrons always goes Electrons are negative, and so they like to flow toward the cathode, which is positive. The cathode is positive, and your anode is going to be negative. And so your flow of electrons is going to go toward, because electrons are negative, they want to flow toward the positive side, um, which is the cathode. And so hopefully that kind of introduces you to an electrochemical cell. We're going to study them again in great detail, though, coming up. Okay, redox reactions. Uh, we'll do this in class where we put this zinc strip into a copper sulfate solution. And, uh, and this is a redox reaction. <clears throat> it says the chemical reaction that occurs in a battery or an electrochemical cell is called a redox reaction. Redox reactions are reactions that involve the transfer of electrons from one species to another. So redox reactions involve the transfer of electrons. So if electrons are being moved from one species to another, species is just a generic term for whatever it is you're talking about. In this example, we're talking about zinc and copper. And so um, from one species to another. Let's see what's happening here. Um, we've got copper. Cu2 plus right here. What's happening is that there's electrons from this zinc strip, there's two electrons here, that are being added to the copper ions in the solution. And when that happens, this copper, when it gets two electrons here, forms copper with no charge, pure copper. That's what this black, it looks black right here, but this is pure copper. And so you're forming the copper, but the zinc, is actually, if you pull this zinc strip out at the end, this zinc strip is getting eaten away and it's losing electrons. Um, and so there's a transfer of electrons here. It's going from the zinc to the copper. And so you're forming copper, but you're also um, um, taking away from the zinc. Anyway, we'll do this demonstration in class and show you exactly what happens there. Okay, so redox reactions are reactions that involve reduction and oxidation. That's what this term means, re, uh, redox. It's made up of two words, really. Reduction, that's where the R-E-D comes from, right there. And oxidation, this is where the ox comes from. And so redox reactions are reactions that involve reduction and oxidation. Well, what's Reduction and oxidation, let's learn. Reduction is the gaining of electrons. So reduction is the gaining of electrons. Oxidation is the losing of electrons. OK. 
Okay? When I was going through school, there was an easy way to keep this straight. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of mnemonics. Mnemonics are just simple uh, ways of remembering something in order. For example, I was taught to remember oil rig. Oil rig is a mnemonic that helps us remember something. Well, oil is, the O is oxidation, the I is is, and the L is loss. So oxidation is the loss of electrons. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is the gaining of electrons. So if you just remember oil rig, you can remember which one is which. Oxidation is loss. Reduction is gaining electrons. Now some chemistry textbooks teach it a different way, and you might have another chemistry teacher that, that does it a little different. There's also another mnemonic that works great. Leo goes ger. Leo is loss of electrons is oxidation. And ger is for gaining electrons is reduction. So they both in the end will, will tell you what's happening in, in oxidation and reduction. But uh, I will always, since I was taught oil rig first, I kind of have that one in my mind. I will use that one most of the time in class. But if you like Leo goes ger, that one works great too. Okay, so let's look at this diagram. Here's an atom right here. And if I was to ask you what's happening with this atom, is it being oxidized or reduced? Well, we could write down oil rig. And it looks like this there was an electron here, but now it's and now it's lost. So oxidation is the loss of electrons, and so oxidation is happening with this atom. And of course, this atom is gaining an electron because it, it just was added here. So reduction is gaining, so this one is being reduced, or reduction is taking place there. Now there's another term that uh, we use in chemistry that's a little bit confusing. Actually, it's a, it's a lot confusing because it's, it's just the opposite. So let's go through this, this other term. When something is oxidized, we say that it is a reducing agent. An agent causes something. The reducing agent causes that substance to be oxidized. And that's confusing to a lot of students. But what I say is if it has agent in it, just think the opposite of that is taking place. So when it says reducing agent, actually what's taking place is oxidation. Okay, This one is gaining an electron, so reduction is taking place. But we say that this atom would be the oxidizing agent. Again, if it has agent in it, the opposite, opposite of that is taking place. So reduction would be taking place there. Okay, I've got this uh, table in your notes. I would like you to take a second and fill that out. So hit pause on your video, fill it out, and then we'll talk about it here in a second. Okay, so hopefully you filled that out in your notes. Um, this is a very important table, so I wanted to go through it real quickly. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. If we think of oil rig, oxidation is the loss of electrons, but it's also known as the reducing agent. Whenever you see the word agent, think the opposite is taking place. So if it says reducing agent, the opposite is actually taking place. Oxidation is happening. Okay, This causes reduction. Something that is oxidized will lose mass because it's losing electrons. So it's going to lose mass. Um, and there is an increase in an oxidation number. We haven't talked about oxidation numbers yet, but that will be the topic of the next video. So in oxidation we see an increase in the oxidation number. Okay, let's come over here and talk about reduction for a second. Like the oil rig, reduction is gaining electrons, so we're gaining electrons. It's an oxidizing agent. Remember when you see the word agent, it's oxidizing agent, and the opposite is happening. The reduction is actually happening. It causes oxidation, and we gain mass. The substance that is reduced is going to get more massive. And why it's called reduction is because we're reducing the oxidation number. 
whatever is being reduced sees its oxidation number reduced or it goes lower. And so that's a really good table of things to remember um, oxidation and reduction. So hopefully we have this down. Okay, one last slide I wanted to review with you. Let me ask you some questions and then um, I want you to think about the answer before I say it. So which color, either green or orange here, is being oxidized? Which one is being oxidized? So I always, I still sometimes do this. I just write oil rig down and oxidation is, oxidation is the loss of electrons. So which one is losing electrons? The answer, the green substance is being oxidized because it's losing its electron. And which one is being reduced? Well, the, that's pretty easy because that's just the other one. But reduction is gaining electrons. So this orange substance here is being reduced. Okay. Which color is the oxidizing agent? Okay, oxidizing agent. There's that word agent. So think opposite of oxidizing is reduce. Which one's being reduced? Which one is reduction? Reduction is the gaining. So the orange one is gaining. So this is the answer is orange. And which one would be a reducing agent? The reducing agent. Again, there's that word, let's think opposite. So let's think about which one is being oxidized here. Oxidized is loss of electrons, so that's green. Okay. And then one last question, which color is gaining mass and which one is losing mass? So if you're, if you're adding electrons to this side, you're gonna be gaining mass. So which one's gaining mass? That one is the orange. And which one's going to lose mass? That is the green one. Okay. Oxidation, whatever is being oxidized will lose mass. So this one's going to be oxidized, it's going to lose mass. And so hopefully that helps um, kind of introduce you to this new chapter. It's about uh, redox reactions and electrochemical, electrochemistry. And um, it's kind of a little tricky at first when you're learning it to keep it straight. So if you need to review the notes, um, I would do that. And if you need to, you can watch this video again. But hopefully that helps.